Good day, Oga. Good day, officer. From where to where? Uh, we are coming from the program. We are heading back home. Oh, sorry. Carry on. Carry on. Hey! What sound am I hearing? What is that sound? Oh guy, I don't know sir. Sir, I am watching. Yeah. Hey, please. I'm not talking to you, brother. Respect yourself. I'm talking to my officer. That was not what you told me. Uh, oh guy, I don't get. How can you get me? Hey, bros. Are you not watching movie on Captain? No bad network you to come. Yes, sir. How do you know? <laughs> I can't mistake that. <laughs> I know they are introduction facts. Uh, I love watching their movie. I am always blessed. <laughs> and have you subscribed? Yes, and everyone in my house. Wow. <laughs> have you subscribed? No, sir. Subscribe now. That's another. Oh, correct, sir. Have you subscribed, sir? Uh, no. Eh. Hey. <laughs> Go and subscribe now, sir. Uh -huh. Is that an order, sir? Order? Uh -huh. No. It's <laughs> just an advice for Christian brother like me and you. <laughs> yes, thank you. I'm so sorry for delaying you. You, you can go. You can go. Thank you so much. God bless you. Thank you. you. <laughs> thank you. you. Thank you. Yeah, carry on. Carry on. Thank you. Yes, have you subscribed? Yes, sir. Oh, yeah, subscribe right now. Lo 
Oro Kita Bikwe Tele La Giri Tapi La Kuala Ko Se Wu Jesu Wa Ibe Alleluia Ayolo Ye Be Mo Tiri Na Di Jiba Because you are God, you are everywhere. The creator of heaven and earth, Obato Paloli Ubogo, we thank you for what you have begun to do since the beginning of this program. Thank you for what you did on the first day, the second day, and today. We say we are exalted in the name of Jesus. Amen. We are here this evening. Speak to us. Amen. We will hear your voice Amen. and not the voice of man. Holy Spirit. Amen. Let it be that tonight we will open the eyes of understanding of everyone present in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let your word bring deliverance, Amen. healing, Amen. salvation, Amen. reconciliation Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. I want to appreciate God for all that He is doing, and I want to particularly appreciate. Our fathers who are here present, thank you so much for all that you are doing. I may not be able to mention names. I, I heard that the uh, PFN chairman and the chairman elect, and all of the, I celebrate all of you daddies. It is a privilege to minister in the presence of daddies and mommies. The Lord will honor you in Jesus' name. Amen. I appreciate the man of God who has given me this privilege to bring the word of God. So we go straight to God's word and I know the Lord will bless you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Yesterday, we looked at eternal life and I call that part one. So today, we will move ahead and I'll be reading from the book of John. John chapter number three. Permit me to also apologize for coming late um, today is the graduation of one of my daughters, and uh, we are just returning from there, so that's why I came late. I didn't do that to slight the men of God here. John chapter 3, I'm going to read from verses 13 to 17. And no man had ascended up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven, even the Son of Man which is in heaven. John chapter 3. Verses 13 to 17. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Yesterday, we looked at the subject of eternal life and everlasting life. And I said categorically yesterday that eternal life is a life that cannot be affected by death. A life that is not limited. A life that cannot disappear. A life that is only given by Jesus. An everlasting life is a life that cannot die in the real sense. But is a life that is absent, can be absent on the earth for a certain time, but will continue elsewhere. And I try to explain how that in Genesis chapter 3, we saw how Eve deceived, I mean, how the serpent deceived Eve. She took the forbidden fruit, gave to her husband, and the Bible said, as soon as they ate, their eyes were opened. And God had warned them that the day you eat this, you are going to die. 
So as soon as they ate that, they lost eternal life. But they were left with everlasting life. Because the Bible says, when God made man, he breathed into him, and he became a living soul, a soul that cannot die. So, it is only in Christ that eternal life is found. But every soul that is living has everlasting life. And I, I went to the book of Luke, where Jesus went, told us the parable of the rich man and Lazarus. How that Lazarus died and he opened, in fact the Bible said, angels carried him into the bosom of Abraham. And how the rich man also died, but he opened his eyes also, and what he saw was torment. So the two of them, after transition from this earth, they were alive. But one is in eternal life, that is Lazarus, and the other one is just having eternal life. I mean, everlasting life. And today, we are going to build on that. Amen. Amen. Now, you know, in the Garden of Eden, as soon as they ate the forbidden fruit that I call the fruit of death, God made a statement and said, now, we have to send these people out of this place. Lest they eat the fruit or the, 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 the fruit of life. Because as soon as they disobeyed God, they have submitted their obedience to the devil and they are, it has been corrupted. The intention of God for man has been corrupted by that sin. So God now said in that corruptness, if they go ahead or if they went ahead to eat the tree of life, then they will never die on this earth. Then the corruption will abound. So that was why he said in Genesis chapter 3, verse 16, he said, the, 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 the serpent shall bruise, I mean, the, the seed of the woman shall bruise the serpent head. From Genesis chapter 3 verse 16, we have seen how God had made a provision for Jesus that would come to return the eternal life, which he lost. Am I making sense to you? I am trying to be fast because of my time. So, when man ate the forbidden fruit, the fruit of death, man died, lost eternal life. Now, God had to make an arrangement to bring Jesus. You know, Jesus said something, let me read for you, in the book of John chapter 6, verse 54. John 6, 54. Jesus said, Whoso eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood, as what? Eternal life. The agenda of God to bring back man back to eternal life was what made him to arrange for Jesus to come. Because as soon as we ate the forbidden fruit, all of us died in Adam. So Jesus coming, that was why he said, I am the tree of life. The tree of life that was forbidden them from eating, that they, why God sent them out, God now brought it back in a human form. That is why Jesus said, anyone that eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life. So Jesus is the tree of life that we did not eat in the garden. Am I making sense here? This is the redemption package. That is why every man born of a woman, whether he was born on the altar or in the sanctuary, wherever, he is born a sinner. He is born a sinner. And as soon as he is born, because the bread, the first bread that produced man is the bread of God that breathes into the soul of man. So any man that is born, whether he dies immediately, cannot actually die. Because, like we saw in the, in, in the case of Lazarus and the rich man, they both opened their eyes somewhere else. But where you open your eyes after this life is what determines whether you are in eternal life or you are just living everlasting life. Now, before we move on, let's look at what happens. You know, I took time, I don't want to go back to what I did yesterday, to explain to you the, the difference. How 
Jesus went to the heart of the earth and took the leadership, the control of where the devil has held all the people that died until the, until the death of Jesus, held them captive. Then he took he took the key and transited all the, the, the people of all that are saved, transited them to heaven. You know, I said yesterday that the day Jesus resurrected, people saw people that they saw, they knew. The Bible said, even the graves were opened and he transited them to paradise. So, since that time, there's not a demarcation. That is why, you know, in some other religion, when they want to bury their dead, they turn them upside down like this. Wait, if you tell Lord, you more love it. So, paradise is here, and is Sheol is here. So that there's not a dem- demarcation between a saint and a sinner. The devil is no longer in control, like I explained yesterday. I don't want to go back. So today, we now want to quickly just have a glimpse of what happens at the other side of eternal life. Our concern since yesterday, and as according to the team, is eternal life. Now, what is the opposite of eternal life? Eternal death. Eternal destruction. Let's look at some few scriptures where the Bible refers to this other side. You know, when I was younger in, in faith, when I was younger in faith, I, I was fortunate to attend a church where they took time to teach us week by week, every now and then, about the concept of heaven, concept of earth, rapture, and all of those things. And in those days, do they not even want to think of sin because we are thinking, hmm, hmm, if rapture comes, but it's no longer so now. Our messages have shifted to materialism and amassing words. And all the words that we have amassed over the years has it made the world better? Has it even made us as Christians better? No. And so some of the teachings I'm going to teach today, or I've mentioned because I cannot go to because of time, they are things that have been taught when I gave my life to Christ like 27, 28 years ago. In normal Bible study. But now, you know, we have some of these mm, teachers and pastors who say we should not concentrate on teaching on hair. It will scare them. It will scare them. You know, when, when <laughs> every child, let me see, an average child, we see fire and be attracted to it. Yes. I saw it happen to my children. But you, you don't need to teach them, don't touch. When they touch, they move. So if you now say, ah, hey, yeah, yeah. You so that they will not be afraid, let's keep fire from them. By the time he wants to enter it, he will cook enter it like this, because he has not been exposed to the small one. So the concept of teaching about hell and heaven should be what we, we reiterate and teach and teach and teach in our churches today. Because our failure to teach it in recent time or in the last 20 years, we saw what it has become in our societies. So, the other side of eternal life is what I will just mention quickly. And I'm not here to make you afraid, but at times it is the fear that you have that will make you to avoid going to hell. The fear of failure will make every student to read. But if you are pumping sinners, that is why we now have all manners of music ministers, all manners of pastors that are not that are not circumcised. Because there's nothing that makes them fear again. We now call sin, mistake. We have, we have names for lies, white lies, honest lies, business lies. So I'm, I'm sorry, I'm going to talk about her. Because the other side of it is eternal life. And that is what we are preparing for. But let's look at what happens to the other side. There's a custom the Bible calls Sheol. S-H-E-O-L. It's an Hebrew word. In other, in, in, no, most times when you see, the Bible talks about hell. Hell. Most times what you see in the English word is hell. 
But at different times, I will read a few scriptures, you will see how that some, some of them are not in the final air. I mentioned that also yesterday, that we have what we call Sheol, we have what we call Hades, that the Bible refers to them as Kikoku, great. You know, in my area, some few years back, maybe two, three years back, we caught a thief. And I happened to be the only person that sought with that we took him to the police station. And when we got to the police station, they put him in a cell. Awaiting when we would go to the judge. And you know, the following day they said they should transfer it to the to court. And we came to the court he had gone on here. And I came, I entered, I didn't even enter the, the box. They asked me what happened. I told them what I know. So at the end of the day, the judge now says, okay, because he's a suspect and we saw that he did this, they now took him to Kirikiri. Now, I'm trying, I'm going somewhere. Sheol and Hades is a place where sinners are kept temporarily until they determine their final place in hell. So they kept this guy in the, in, in, uh, the cell, police cell, for a few days. So at the end of the day, when the dog, the dog now said, let's take him to Kirikiri. If I know to throw my wassail, I saw blue here, Abi. That is what it happens. What happens when the Bible talks about hair? I can't he's talking about the place. So every man that dies now, out of Christ, that does not give his life to Christ, has not got him to hell yet. He's still in Hades or Sheol. That place is still a place of torment. Take note, in Luke, we are there yesterday, Luke chapter 6 or thereabout, talking about Lazarus and the rich man. The Bible did not say there was fire there. He said when the man opened his eyes, he was in torment. The place is still a place of torment. A place where people can imagine that a, a drop of water can satisfy their task. So that's where they are kept until the final judgment. The Bible says in Revelation chapter 20, he said, where sinners we have their portions, there are departments in hell. Department, you know, if you go to University of Illinois or College of Education, we have departments, we have faculties. Some will need history, some will need mercy. The same way in hell, in hell, there are departments. But that's final hell. Nobody is there now. Nobody. That place is called Gehenna. That is where the Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, to some way, Ati Ku, Ati Koku, Aku, that you know, no, no, Akwaji. Meaning, Sheol and Hades and people that are there will now be submitted to Gehenna. I'm just paraphrasing this. I don't know, I know, I, I hope I'm not confusing us. Are we getting blessed? Yes. So, Sheol. Now, let's see. The Sheol is predominantly a neutral way to the grave. They refer to the grave or the place of the dead. Where the dead are kept. You know, before, even on earth, before when somebody dies, that they think they are very We keep them where? In the mouth. Abi? Just keeping them until we know whether we kill you. Know, Abi, a girl here. Abi, we are also. In God's plan, too. There are place, there's a place where the, the dead in, in outside of Christ are kept. It is called Sheol, Hades. And there's a place where the dead in Christ are kept. It is called Paradise. Even Abraham, the father of faith, is not in heaven. He's not with God yet. He's in Paradise. The waiting room. Amen. Amen. It is in, in at least one person, there's an indication that this place that I'm talking about is a negative place. Let's read the book of Luke, chapter 16, verse 23 to 25. That was where I read yesterday, Luke chapter 16. He said, And in hell he lift up his eyes, being in torments, and sheared Abraham afar off, 
and Lazarus in his bosom. And he cried, I pray in the name of Jesus, when you transit from this body to the next place, your portion will not be a portion of crying. Amen. He cried. And to Jachiki at the Bogalano, who then told Sukuluni, that won't be a year. He said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me. Send Lazarus. And dip his tip, to dip his tip, the, the tip of his finger in water. Now, what I'm trying to establish there is the fact that that place is a place of torment. You know, this is the people is of one The program where I went for, that I told you I came, why I came late, is one tent, big tent. At some point, I couldn't feel our life. We feel our life. You know, we do all the last time. But because we live, what? Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, need the bell. There is hell. Messages that is on social media. The social media is, is not even helping at all. I thought you hear all manners of pastors saying so many things as if there's no heaven and hell again. There is hell. People still go there. People are going there right now as I'm talking. Unfortunately, many people are going there. More than they are going to hell. If you remember hell every now and then. To scare you to not do, to, to not touch sin. I think it is better than for you to think that hell is all right. I don't know what to Everybody that gets to heaven before you know the truth is too late for them. Like this late, uh, rich man. But I don't know the pair. I am going to be a So forget you. Please let me go back and become an evangelist. Okay, so only I'm going to you have you have the call to become an evangelist. Where are you taking you to again? I want to get it the way. Yes, hell is the place of torment. So as you live your life every day, remember hell. You know Jesus was speaking in one of the party or one of the places he's talking with the disciples. He said, "Remember lost wife or on your key." Best thing you can do is you know. Lot's wife. That was how he, she looked back and she never made it. She became a pillar of salt. She doesn't have a, a barrier grant today. So as you are living your Christian life, remember her. I, I, am, I am genuinely afraid for, for, for the generation of young Christians that we are raising now. That we sleep with one another or sleep with each other and just because there's something that will make them that will make them fear. When I was younger, in faith, I was a choir master. I have a book that I kept all our all our all our songs. I composed some of them. I have a corny also come corny double on one side, also only double on one side. Hey, yeah, yeah, hey, yeah, yeah, I'm not saying those who songs are wrong, but we are not reminding ourselves about heaven. We are not telling people about the, the pain and the agony in hell. In those days, anywhere you turn to, go back, body, no message, go back, body, no worry. I'm not Hello, to do I want to feel it to a year. Hey, let's share. Elunu, elese o, o ba no nure o kwada, ida yo ma fere de. Amo bo bo ni si adutoni. Ori, if I adut ili ami ola umjino, ni no ori mi. Eni mi yo, eni mi yo, eni mi yo, eni mi yo. Go wo, go wo, go wo. I don't get. I'm not saying those songs are. But end up when we get when you, a call, a song, a cantu, a cowboy, just one day, just one part of it. Es el oro, y cunieres es. Es el oro, y cunieres es. 
Maybe this will be the last time they will invite me here so that you must cut that off. But we say, Master Timiloni, some of us are still going to heaven. If you are not going, me, I'm going to heaven. Yeah. Amen. 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 And this is what translated as hell. Let's read Matthew. Don't let me know because I'm going fast. Matthew 16, 18 also says, And I say also unto thee, that thou art bitter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Now the gate of hell there is not talking about Gehenna, he's talking about Ifoku, he's talking about Hades and Sheol. So even Jesus understood, I know what because we have this limitation, I want to translate here, hell, hell, you know, no, so, mm -mm. Amen. Amen. Now let me quickly go to Gehenna and move to my main point today. Gehenna is used 12 times in the New Testament. It is the word that is consistently used for hell. That is hell. Gone, gone. But wait, I'm sorry. Oh, Lord, you see. Oh, Lord, you see. It's still Gehenna. Here, Alessi, Alessi, Palace, on our way. I read Revelation chapter 14, verse 10. <laughs> Revelation 14, 10. Jesus speaking to the dear evangelist, the dear apostle John, in the Isle of Patmos. <laughs> I, I, see, God loves us so much, oh. Jesus had come and died, resurrected. Did all miracles. Quick answer by me. It may not mean you foresee. Now, I said that was not enough. He came back to show revelation to this man, John. Quick talk. Pay back by me. These are the places you are going. He now gave us. Go and read the book of Revelation very well. A room of buy. Boy, I come on. You don't read it again. Jeremiah 29 verse 11. I know the thought I have towards you. I want to do. All things are yours. At a moment, I want to what do. The Bible is meant to moon what do at some point. The, the Bible is meant to power them at some point. Some years back, I was invited to come and minister, give a charge. A charge. So a worker, a conference, a big conference, so the workers. So they invited me to come and chat there. And I was like, ah, my <laughs> bad lady, or who bought me? And I sat down with the night, or landing one in case I didn't go. Because as I was preparing, God was saying, You want to go to the Rebabi? I was just crying. So, if I do my video, I do my video, I should work it. You see, I come and see the impact. If you want to get with this, you can't do it. All along, Baba, I'm going to listen. I'm going to listen. I'm going to listen. Like some bullets. Of course, there are times that you want to go with excited. I say, wow! But there are times, I'm going to put me to the door. A man of God once said, and I have seen that. That's what the principle I operate by. If you attend the church for a whole one month, and there's no day, at least one of the messages in six months, that the man of God is speaking, and it's as if he's talking to only you, and we move you to tears. Leave that church. That church cannot take you to heaven. I'm an evangelist. I don't have a church. So don't come to my church. So I can say it. There's no Sunday that when the word of God is coming, you are seeing, ah, I've been a pastor. Look at my life. 
Don't go to such church. Come back to where? Pe poli kuye rudo. Apologies to pastors. Pastors now they they pride in what is the strength of your church member. How many churches did Jesus build? Pastor now pride themselves in killing jeep, killing motor wololo. Gosh. I don't know. Jesus did not even have a cow. Let me move on. Are we together? Are we getting blessed? Amen. <laughs> Matthew 13. 42, ah, Jesus, Lord, Lord. Now, talking about where the word Gehenna was used, and shall cast them into it. Okay, I didn't even read that revelation. This revelation 14:10. The same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God. Talking about sinners, people who reject Christ, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation, and he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone. Anywhere you hear the Bible talks about fire and brimstone, that is Gehenna. In the presence of the Holy Angels and, and in the presence of the Lamb. <laughs> you can't imagine how that Jesus, the merciful Jesus, will now sit down. Can you hear that? No, no. What is it? What is it? What is it? What is it? And don't forget, they don't die. Oh. They will be there forever. Death in his torment. It's called eternal fire. It's called death. It's called second death. I'm trying to be fast now. What you want to <laughs> Let me read Revelation chapter 2 verse 11. He that has an ear. Or a young one Babylon. Tanya will let him be. Eh? Could see. We eat it on Sonya. That type of year is not talking about this one. He said, Emma, when, so, when you are saying something and you are saying it, you know that was the time that even Jesus said, that at this point in Revelation chapter 22, he that is righteous, let him be, continue to be righteous. He that is unholy, let him become. He said, I behold, I come quickly. Quickly, yet he did all. And I will give to everyone according to his work shall be. I don't know why the Holy Spirit is talking through me like this. This is not what I put there. Honestly, that is not my note. I am coming quickly. I have said it in parable. I have said it in no play words. You are not, you are just doing what you like. I come quickly. And at times coming quickly may not mean that rapture. People die suddenly now. I come quickly. I will give to everybody according as your work shall be. He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit said unto the churches. And all the prosperity preachers, unto the churches. He that overcometh shall not be out of the second death. There is a second death. And that is the people, the people that have only everlasting life, without eternal life, they will partake in second death. <coughs> Lake of fire. Anywhere you see the Bible talks about lake of fire. <laughs> lake. You know lake? A lake is a pool of water. Mm. Now imagine fire. Fire that is in, in a pool. Hey. You know, a man of God once gave an illustration that I love. That, <laughs> you know, I want to try it as a young believer. If you don't want to go to hell, test yourself with hell on earth and see whether you can endure. Say, put a candle. What did I call it? Candle. And for one minute, put just one finger, one, not the whole body. Kiss a no, kiss a stove, kiss a gas, candle. And put your hand 
one minute. If you can do that, then you are ready for hell. <laughs> How many of us can do that? When I tried this, honestly. Say, <laughs> me, it is the bell. This one, I would say, lake of fire. You know, some people say something, they kill me. Oh, no, no, I will see so much that God will just throw me. And he will throw me. Over. Hello, no, you said you want to wear a can you offer a commoto? Oh, Mokoto, she said. You are in the remote control. Then, what the Bible calls lake of fire is not. It's not telling that. See, I go around you. I will do it. You will not go to hell. Amen. Let me round off. Preparing for eternal life. That is my main message for today. But I've said enough. Let me just round off. I've just mentioned it. Number one, repent and be baptized. Repent now, I am talking to supposed believers. This is not an open ear to say. A lot of us that are here claim to have been born again. But are there things in your life that you need to repent now? Repent! Don't wait till tomorrow. I heard the story of a young woman. They went on the evangelism and they went to preach to her. I said, I still have a long time. I'm too young. When I get old, I will accept Christ. The following day, look. <coughs> Repent. If you are preparing for this eternal life, I have taken time to tell you about it. But if you are going to eternal life, repent on a daily basis. Acts chapter 2, verse 38. Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sin. Ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Now, if you are also a sinner that you have never given your life to Jesus at any point in time, repent tonight. Tomorrow is not sure. The most unfortunate person on earth is the person that goes to hell. The end of story, Guru Kutu Laye, and two did the ball. Number two, prepare for eternal life. Obey God. Revelation chapter 22, verse 14 says, Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life. You cannot have right to the tree of life if you are not consistently obeying God. How much of obedience is inside of you? Do you obey God in tithes? You obey God in holiness? You obey God in righteousness? There are some of us, God cannot alter your, your, your activities. But you go get see what you buy. I'm not to be able to do it. And God say, oh, mommy, fast. What is it? 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 Obey God to the letter. I know in God's, in God's agenda, there is no partial obedience. Okay. Do you remember the young prophet? What killed him? Lack of obedience. More jail to body bail. That does not mean that you cannot be hungry or that you will not be hungry. Once in the day, you can say, Oh, you can say, Oh, you can say, Oh, you can say, They say, Oh, the last one, not the year. Obedience! He said, If ye are willing, I said, Dr. Wang was 19, and are obedient, do we eat the fruit of the land? The fruit of the land is not necessarily the fruit of Nigeria. Amen! He said, Don't, I want to. That obey the commandment of God, they are the one that will eat the true, the, the, the tree of life. That is eternal life. How much of obedience do you have? Can God call you and say, Do this for me and you will do it? Is, is your life guided daily by the word of God? Of God's word, do you obey in your life? 
That is what will determine whether you will go to heaven or, or her head. Number next, good works. In Matthew chapter 5, verse 14 to 16, preparing for eternal life. Good works. Matthew 5, 14 to 16, he says, Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Who was speaking here? Jesus. I find it very difficult to reconcile the fact that a Christian does not have good, good character in the neighborhood. What kind of Christianity is that? In your place of work, people don't like you. Not because you are righteous. They don't like you because, oh, Niwa, you have no good work. You'll be shouting, be, be fighting around. One way away, Bobby, Brian, and one way. You know, at times it pains me when we see the magnitude of corruption in Nigeria. And I ask myself, where are the Christians? Where is our light? A woman recently, in this present dispensation of government, went to Baba Oyedeko to pray for her. And she said, Baba said, by the next time you come to the convention, you will be a minister. She became a minister. All that six months, what did you get for my job? It's a bad testament, a bad testimony for Christians. For my job, it is God. I don't want to mention you can in the, in the public space. Christian, no good work. Another one that paid me, a supposed Christian, even if they are not born again, there are few born again among politicians, and I'm not afraid to say that because even their work, you know. A supposed Christian was in charge of jam for several years. Overcome what they did, sing, sing, and over fee. And cha 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 cha. Fee. You understand? I don't want to mention it because this is going online. Mm-hmm. And in, in six months, or oh, what my you only for maybe 20 years, oh, they have something up with Joba. It was a shame. Mm-hmm. The man is still there today. No good works. And these are the people who invite our church. What we donate to our part of Jesus. Jesus will call our part of you know what I'm part of? When we encourage corruption in the church of God. Good works. In your place of work, we are a government worker. You got to work 10 o'clock or work or 7 30. What is the difference? I yield, I yield no more. You finish it here. Preparing for eternal work. Number next. Number four. Fellowship with the Father. <laughs> that is personal fellowship. How many Christians have time for fellowship, Bible study, fasting and prayer? And I am not talking about, you know, holy okay, holy wow. You know, most Christians are prodigal, prodigal Christians. You know, prodigal Christians? Give me. I want to do to love, to love, to give me. You know, prayer is not all about giving. You know, a prayer is fellowship. At times, you are in God's presence. You are not asking anything. I want to fellowship with you. Yes, my wife, for seventeen years. When we were cutting, we would be walking. I don't walk on. I remember one day. We trekked from Jari, looky, looky. We trekked to Olaolu and then so on. Ask me what are we talking about? Me, Jay, but you are just enjoying it. Hard work of a guy that will work on me. Fellowship. But God, God, I want to go to school. My kid, school fees, 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 school fees. You can't go to hell like that. What is, what is, what is, what is, Go to a confederate or loan, or loan, you bank here to what you need, but don't withdraw ATM. If you are going to prepare for eternal life, fellowship with God, that time God will tell you, if this way it is for you, Laura, and then don't worry, this is pride, keep quiet. Just go, God, 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 God,
Mr. Obama, fasting and prayer, Bible study. You read your Bible daily. See, I, I caught this from a man of God many years ago, and that's what is still helping me today. He said, whatever will not make you to read your Bible in a day, that thing should be strong enough for you not to eat that day. Ora ye je wa aro, ora ye je to son, o je tale, kona wa tu fiko kisi la arif, o ora ye kabaibu. You are not preparing for heaven. Wale la ye mo social media, ati buku yo, do an pe, ato risi risi. I'm ready enough. Finally, be ready. Matthew chapter 25, verse 7 to 11. Matthew 25, 7 to 11. Then all those baggies arose <laughs> and filled the alarms. And the foolish said unto the wise, Give us of your oil, for our lamps are gone out. But the wise answered, saying, No, no, not so. Lest there be not enough for us and you, but go ye. And the said, And they went. The bridegroom came, <laughs> and it was too late. Let me read this Revelation. <laughs> Revelation 19.7. Revelation 19.7. Let us be glad and rejoice, and give honor to him, to Jesus. For the marriage of the Lamb is come, and his wife has been made ready. It is a Christian that is ready that goes with Jesus. When prophet sounds today, what is that thing you are thinking about now? Toro confess a little that you are going to wedding, of a graduate, of a sir, of a university. All those things, if you care is not taking, those are the things that will not make you to make him. Be ready anytime. In those days, when we are going out, you tell your wife, if Jesus comes, I pass the Lord. But these days, ah, because yes, you could get back contract. If I get this contract, get another one. You are not ready. Be ready every time so that you, 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 you are not living your life carelessly. Charlie Paro. Sorry, exaggerate. Sorry, Jim Konik. You are not ready. Jesus is coming very soon. It is those people that are ready that are going with him. Eternal life is not cheap. The Bible says, work out your salvation, your own salvation, with fear and trembling. Don't allow the forces of this world to cage you and you are just following, you are just flowing with the world. You are just flowing with the world. You are not thinking of heaven. There's no how you can have eternal life like that. You are not carrying the life of Christ. People cannot see you and say, see, when when no matter how big darkness is, when light comes, what happens to the darkness? It disappears. Where is your light? Be ready. I conclude this song. Oh, the la combo, oh, the number one, oh, the la combo, and you will say, the lesser you walk away, Lord, you may go more in me. Stand up. Oh, I said, 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 Oh, I Oh, I Oh, I Oh, I said, Oh, Oh, I Oh, I said, Oh, I Oh, I Oh, That was the last time. Come here, you go. Go daily, go daily, don't lock. 
Oh God, help me not to miss eternal life. Help me, oh God, not to draw back. He said we are not among the company of them who draw back. Lord, help me not to miss eternal life. You can miss anything on earth, you can get it back. But once you miss eternal life, that is the end. Alone shall know me. What they give but that we hear here again. Oh God, in my year, me. Tell the king, shut up. Tell the jacky one year, who yet. Tell the jacky one year, who are still there. Alone shall know me. And that came from us in there. Holy work by one of me. Oh God, I'm messing on me. Help me to be ready. I don't want to go to hell. Don't let me go to hell. Have mercy on me. Let me be prepared. Let me be ready. Have mercy on me. Don't let it be too late for me. Holy one shall know me. Holy one shall know me. In Jesus' mighty name we are praying.